Hey guys, this is going to be my third attempt at recording this video, and I'm going to try to make this short, because the first time it was like 30 minutes long, and I tried to use this mic that I've always used, and uh, I tested it before I recorded it, but then after I did a 30 minute long video and I played it back, it was like you could hardly hear it, and I just, ugh! So, then I put on this lapel mic, which always works great, and I uh, tested it, and I recorded about a 15 minute video. And then about halfway through, the audio just cut out. I don't know if the battery died or what, but it just went from sounding great to being no no audio. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, it's frustrating. This is why it's hard for me to do videos on the computer sometimes. But uh, I want to start doing it again. I got a program called Screencast-O-Matic, which I always use in the past. I quit using it for a little while. I'm going to go back to using it because I think it's the best option. Having issues with mics, though, but... I'm going to get it figured out, and uh, I want to start recording more videos on the computer. This is why I've recorded videos on the phone recently, because I can upload them so a lot faster, and um, I don't have issues like that. So, But I'm going to try to work with it again. I'm going to try to go over this article really quick, because you know the first time I read through the entire thing, now I'm just going to summarize some stuff. I would like to look at some gotquestions.org articles. Because um, it was a source that I used to always go to, and uh, they're not right about everything, you know, and I don't agree with a lot that they have to say. I wanted to look at what they had to say about covenant theology, and I want to look at what they have to say about dispensationalism. Now, let's look at the beginning of the article. It says, what is covenant theology? It says, please note, as a ministry, gotquestions.org, is not in agreement with all aspects of covenant theology. While we are, for the most part, in agreement with covenant theology in regards to the doctrines of grace, Calvinism, we do not agree with covenant theology in regards to the relationship between Israel and the church, and in regards to the end times. The below article is written by someone who holds to all aspects of covenant theology. We thought it would be worthwhile to have an article that positively presents covenant theology, as it is always good for our viewpoints to be challenged, motivating us to further search the scriptures to make sure our beliefs are biblically sound. So they have this note before they have their answer that they do not agree with covenant theology. Now, there's probably a lot of believers who are just like me when they got saved. You know, they're in love with God's word. They're studying it. They want to learn more. And they're looking up articles and they're researching things to try to, to, to get help to understand. So they go to Google and uh, when they look for things about the Bible, one of the first resources, one of the first links that's going to come up is gotquestions.org. Gotquestions.org covers a whole lot of stuff, and they cover stuff on Jesus being the Son of God and the Trinity, and they have a lot of sound answers when it comes to stuff like that, so they can be very helpful. And so you start to look at them as like a trusted source, okay? And then you start hearing about dispensationalism and covenant theology, and you're curious, you know, or, um, you know, dispensationalism is pretty popular, so first of all, you know, a lot of people are going to be learning that in the churches and stuff, and, um, but then they might hear about covenant theology, so they want to know about that. And one of the first things that's going to pop up is gotquestions.org in this article. And the first thing that they say about it is that they do not agree with covenant theology. So it gets put in a negative light right off the bat. And then they say, well, we do agree with covenant theology as far as it goes with Calvinism. So they're tying covenant theology and Calvinism together. And this is this preconceived notion that everybody has that, you know, they're tied together. But it's not that way. First of all, you know, Got Questions is saying that they are Calvinists, but they do not believe in covenant theology. They are dispensational. Okay, just like John MacArthur. He's a Calvinist, but he believes in dispensationalism, basically. And But then you've got R.C. Sproul. He's a Calvinist, and he believes covenant theology. Okay, then you've got John Wesley, the uh, Methodist, who uh, is Arminian, but he holds to his version of covenant theology. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Calvinist or Arminian. It doesn't really, you know, covenant theology is not exclusive to Calvinism. Um, they're making it seem like it is. Okay, so that's going to be a false representation, this false understanding right off the bat. And they're saying that we don't agree with covenant theology in regards to the relationship, uh, or you know, with Israel and the church, and in regards to the end times. So, 
right off the bat with this article, you're learning that covenant theology is not right, basically is what they're saying. And it has to do with Calvinism. And if you're already against Calvinism, then you're immediately going to be against covenant theology. But these things are false, and it's a misrepresentation. And uh, so then they say, well, we are going to present to you this article with this guy who believes covenant theology. Now, what is presented in this article is one version of covenant theology. And so there's basically these theological covenants in covenant theology, which are not explicitly stated in Scripture. So you got the covenants with Abraham and, and Noah and Moses, where you can go to Scripture and you can see that these covenants are explicitly stated. You can go to the specific verses where God said, you know, I'm making a covenant with Abraham, basically. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, dispensationalists don't deny those covenants in Scripture. But there's these theological covenants where they are deducted from Scripture through various verses, kind of strung together, saying, okay, see, we can teach that this covenant exists by looking at these different verses, but it's not explicitly stated. Now, some of these theological covenants uh, differentiate in different versions of covenant theology. I'm seeing that a popular view of covenant theology, uh, which is what, what I see on the internet a lot, even in Wikipedia, in Wikipedia, which I'll go over, and also in uh, Charles Ryrie's Dispensationalism book, when he, he briefly talks about covenant theology, they present this view of covenant theology that has three theological covenants. One is the covenant of redemption, one is the covenant of works, and one is the covenant of grace. And they'll say that the covenant of redemption, basically from my understanding, includes all of the covenants. The covenants before the garden, which is the covenant of works. Or, I mean, the covenant, the covenant in the garden of Eden is the covenant of works, according to them. And then all the covenants afterwards, Noah, Abraham, Moses, etc., are all within the covenants of grace, the covenant of grace. So the covenant of redemption covers everything, and then in the Garden of Eden is the covenant of works. Everything after the Garden of Eden is the covenants of grace, or under the covenant of grace. And, you know, they say the covenant of redemption is before creation because the Bible says that Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth which the Bible does say that, but in the book, The Christ of the Covenants, from what I understand there, he rejects the terms covenant of works and covenant of grace because in the Garden of Eden, before the fall, there was grace. And after the fall, there is a sense of works where we're still to obey God's commands. Okay, not for salvation, but we are to obey God. So there's works and there's grace in both of these times. And so... The terms are flawed. I think that there are specific ideas that go along with these terms that are also flawed as well. It's kind of what I'm seeing. Now, in the um, Christ of the Covenants, he has the only, he only has like two theological uh, covenants, and one is the covenant of creation, which is in the Garden of Eden uh, before the fall, and then the covenant of redemption which takes place after the fall, according to him, okay? Not not everything included in the covenant of redemption. He says, you know, covenant of redemption is after the fall. So, uh, there's that. Uh, so what is presented in this article is one view of covenant theology. It seems to be somewhat of a popular view. Uh, what is in the Christ of the covenants might be what would be called the traditional view, the classic covenant theology, and maybe a uh, Maybe this view that's more popular is more of a modern version of it, or maybe it's more of the Calvinistic version of it. I don't know. Um, something I want to look into more. I do agree with some of the stuff that's said in the Covenant of Theology article. He comes out saying that dispensationalism is more popular, um, and you know, Covenant Theology is a way of interpreting Scripture. It's a framework. And... You know, just because dispensationalism is popular doesn't mean uh, that it's right, obviously. And, and dispensationalism is newer, and, you know, covenant theology is the more held to previously, you know, in the early church, uh, you know, the early churches. But uh, anyways, neither one of those arguments really mean a whole lot. Um, 
And he talks about how, you know, he kind of ties in Calvinism with covenant theology still, which, you know, it's not exclusive to it. Um, talks about the covenant of works and the covenant of grace a lot, which, like I said, I don't agree with those terms. He talks about at the end of the article how covenant theology is not re replacement theology, which I agree with him on that, and that replacement theology is more dispensationalism. Um, I don't know. Just he, he talks about how covenant theology is Christocentric. It's all about you know everything is fulfilled in Christ. I agree with that. He says here at the end whether you're whether you believe covenant theology or dispensationalism, as long as you believe, you know, salvation is by grace through faith, you know, the gospel, and, you know, Jesus is the Son of God and stuff, then, you know, as long as we're in agreement on those things, that's really what matters. And I agree with that, even though I do believe it's very important to understand uh, covenant theology. It's important to understand, you know, how the scriptures are to be interpreted. But basically, my main point here is that gotquestions.org, you're going to come to this website, they're immediately going to put covenant theology in a negative light, and a lot of people might not look past that, and they might not really research deeper into it. And I didn't for years. But I have eventually, through my studies, studying more and more and more and more, I've been led to covenant theology, and I've come to an understanding that dispensationalism is false. So I'm going to look at their article on dispensationalism, too. We'll talk about that. But uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, third time I made this video, so... God bless, guys. I'll make more soon.